Good morning and welcome everyone to Conestoga River trip number two. Uh, earlier in this year I tried to make the first trip but while I was asleep a massive rainstorm came in and was not picked up by the, the rain gauge before I left. So the river was complete chocolate milk but as you can see today the river is much 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 lower. So I can actually get some of the rarer species which there's a ton of uh, on hook and line that I couldn't get last time. Last time the only species I could catch on hook and line here were Kuza darter that was a new one, and um, Rainbow Shiner. And those are all tributary fishes. But now we're going out to big river fishes. And in preparation for that, I went to Facebook and I asked, what species can I catch and what species can I not catch because they're federally friend or state friend or whatever? I said, can I catch a Conestoga log perch? Uh, no. Can I catch a Blue Shiner? No. Can I catch a cold water darter? Uh, no, no. Can I catch an Amber darter? No. Can I catch a Frickle Boy Mad Tom? Um, no. And can I catch a Holiday Darter? Uh, no. But there's a couple more we can't catch. There's a lot of species we cannot catch. I'll just film those. Uh, but there's also a ton of species that we can catch. I think in this hole alone, there's 70 species. This, this is a snorkel hole, by the way. Quite infamous snorkel hole. And there's 70 some odd species in there. I think I already have like 40 or so of those. So there's a lot of new species potential in this area and yeah we're just gonna stork around and see what we can't catch it's already about 4 p.m so the sun's kind of getting a little low you can see there's a giant mountain there very 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 rugged especially for appalachia it's very rugged oh let's get fishing look how clear this water is you can see fish all the way over there you probably see some darters over here too i was looking at some bronze darters i think yeah oh not some muscadine darters surprise or, what do they call them here brittle darters there's a brittle darter right down there Oh, yeah, I see a bronze over there. Yeah, tons of darters. I don't even need to snorkel. This is awesome. We're gonna snorkel anyways, because that is the superior method. All right, so I think to start things off, we're gonna try this little run here and try and find a, a mobile log perch. There's two species of log perch in here. There's Conestoga and mobile. From what I understand, the Conestoga, they are more blotchy on the sides, and some of them also have uh, little colorful implants on their codoponcles too, to like mark them, so. You don't catch it. I never get stuck with red horse. They're always so spooky. There's a bunch right there, though. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. So here is our very, very beautiful uh banded sculpin you can tell it's a banded sculpin because the chin is uh modeled and modeled sculpins do not have a modeled chin <laughs> it also has very spiky operculum and uh banded on its back i uh, go in more in depth on another video but yeah this actually the species of banded sculpin in the mobile drainage this is the mobile drainage strain of banded sculpin which is codis carolinae infernatus yeah codis carolinae infernatus ambush predator yeah I'm just gonna let them go. Some of the sculpins in this area, I found that uh, <laughs> they're so docile. Some of them, they have like a really fluorescent spot on their head. My theory for that is that uh, it's very reflective at night. So like little minnows see it and they swim up to it, then they just get ate. But yeah, here it goes. Good morning, everybody. It is day number two. 
And um, things I've taken away from this river so far, it has the most robust population of red horse that I've seen yet. Uh, second to this is probably the clinch, and then third is probably the Roanoke. There are a lot of red horse in here. I mean, a, a lot of red horse. I'm not going to try and catch any, though. Uh, I will try and catch the blue breast dart I saw yesterday. No, not blue breast, green breast dart I saw yesterday. Uh, they, they weren't biting. They weren't really biting at all. I don't know. They weren't even noticing the bait. Just like a blue breast starter. Who would have thought? So uh, we're going to try to catch one of those. We're also going to try and look for some mobile log perch off of the, the top of the circle hole here. So as you can see, it is about 11 a.m. And the sun is just starting to touch the bank over there, which is really nice. I'll start on that side first. It is kind of chilly. All right. I just found some, uh, some green breasts right down at my feet here. They, they aren't very spooky at all. We're just going to try and catch them here. This is a green breast darter, uh, type of Nothanota, similar to a red line darter, or Blue breast starter, obviously. Um, yeah, that's all I know about it. <laughs> I know it likes swifter water that's kind of bouldery. That's just where I've been seeing it. I've never seen the species before. It is a new species for me. It is species number 257, I believe. Yeah, species number 257 right there. Green breast starter. Very cool. This is a small one, too. It's It, it does have a blue breast, which, um, just like the yellow fin shiner, reality is often disappointing. Reality is often disappointing. Very bland coloring, but bland in a cool way. I don't know, it's weird. Uh, let's catch a bigger one. I got it. I got it. That's a speckled dart. <laughs> well, here's our speckled darter, Ethios sigmaeum. It is species number 250, uh, 258. Yeah, 258. This does. <laughs> this species does feel a little repetitive for me because I've already had it on the life list before. Uh, but that turned out to be a blue spar darter, Ethiosma mediae, and this is Ethiosma stigmaeum. It came out of, very obviously, blue spar darter habitat that I'm familiar with, and that was sandy slack water next, that's kind of flowing, but not really flowing, just a very, very gentle flow to it with sandy substrate, and that's where this one came out of, this little speckled darter, but very neat. I didn't know they got this large. It's actually kind of a big individual. That's a big speckled darter. Anyways. Nope. Oh, it came off the hook. Sweet, but yeah, that's, that's a riffle minnow. Oh, so cool. So that is our oh, riffle minnow. Yeah, Funicobius. Funicobius, I don't even know what. But this fish is just absolutely awesome. It's my third species of Funicobius ever. Uh, the previous two were Kanaw and Stargazing. Uh, and this is my third Funicobius. I think this is actually like the first one caught on hook and line. Not sure. <laughs> this is awesome. I only have one more species of mountain Funicobius left to go, and that is Fat Lips minnow. Uh, and that one's endemic to uh, the, the Holston down to the Tokoa River drainage, but this is this is really cool. It is a sucker mouth minnow, which means that its mouth is like a sucker. It's very inferior and 
just fleshy and just sucks up stuff. They weren't feeding nearly as aggressively as uh, the canal minnows were on one of the previous videos. Where's the previous video? I don't know. Two phonocobius in a row on the videos? Oh my gosh, can you imagine that? This fish is insane. Which is the really odd thing. I caught it out of like the middle of that pool over there. Which, it's called a riffle minnow, so you'd expect it to be over there. But no, it was just in the middle of the pool in the slack water for some reason. Well, that fish was freaking awesome. Um, it's amazing how I can find a food of cobias, but I can't find any log perch. Like, I've probably spent at least 1,500 hours working, you know, with log perch, trying to find log perch, and I can't find any log perch. But, yeah, the sun's starting to, it's, it's only like 2 p.m., and the, that bank's starting to get all shady. So, uh, we're going to, got to hurry up and find some log perch. But before we're going to do that, I'm going to get some footage of those food cobias down there. Then we're just going to look around for log perch, and then if we can't find any, we can't find any, and call it a day. He's so angry. Alright, let's let you go. Alright, well here's our black tail shiner, Cypronella venusa I think is the Latin name. And you can see why they call it a black tail shiner. Uh, it's got that giant black spot on the staccato peduncle. Hopefully it isn't a blue shiner. Hopefully not. That's how we're going to let it go. Like we do all fish we can't identify. I'll, I'll put an annotation if this is not a black tail. I'm fairly darn certain this is a black tail though. This is like the only place in the eastern two thirds of Tennessee that you can even find them too. But this water is just so crystal clear. Look at that. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, it's been about five hours since you last saw me. I've just been going around looking for log perch. Haven't found any, but I did find some kuzu darters and a rainbow shiner. And uh, the kuzu darters especially were in very clear water. And I was able to get some like really awesome eats out of that. So I'll show you one of those clips. <laughs> it's crazy. It rolls. That looks like a centipede. So much biodiversity here, I love it. But yeah, our new species for this episode were a green breast starter, speckled darter, riffle minner, and black tail shiner. The riffle minner especially just makes up for not finding log perch. Like, I mean, any day you can catch a funicobius is an amazing day. You can't ask for more than that. So. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to see my previous excursions to this place and why I was so skeptical about coming here the first time, you can check out this video or this video here. But as always, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you next time.